Hi everybody, Dan Oman here with some exciting news. The RF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Dan Oman, Mike Bear kicking off a 20 cent pick four at Woodbine on Sunday with graded stakes action. Race number six is the whimsical. It's a grade three for fillies and mares going three quarters of a mile on the tapita surface. Let's take a look at this field. And Mike, you got to proceed with caution in a race like this, an early season race at Woodbine. Lots of horses coming off layoffs. Yeah, lots. that's exactly right. A lot coming off layoffs, so you want to be a little wary, but this is a really good field, and we could see several of these uh, fillies knocking heads throughout the year um, in stakes races. They're all really good. And there is a good amount of speed in this race. Let's look at the time form U.S. pace projector, red bar situation. Artie's Princess, who only raced once in 2021. She's expected to make the lead. Dreaming of Drew, who did not race at all in 2021, but at least has a start this year, can be up close to the pace. I think those are the two main pace protagonists. Yeah, I think that's probably right. They also have Dirty Dangle up there. I didn't see her necessarily being part of this pace. Certainly, if the if the pace is fast, I didn't see her being up there. Um, but we'll find out. There is There is plenty of speed in this race, though, so it feels like everybody should have a fair chance. The number one is Lorena. She has won six of eight lifetime starts. She'll be making her first race of 2022. After scoring in the race, we'll show you right now a two-turn event over the Tapita. In this race, she just got loose on the lead, back down the fractions. They went 26 seconds, Mike, for the opening quarter mile of this race. Of course, she had enough to sprint on home. Now, the good news for Lorena fans is she has won from off the pace in the past, and that's likely the trip she'll get here. Yeah, probably going to have to sit a little bit, especially off the layoff. Um, you're right, one to five last time and just absolutely loose on the lead. It was interesting to at least see them go back to using their speed, though, Dan, because when you go back to that Duchess three starts back, I'm not going to sit here and say she was going to win that race, um, but she was not given her best chance to win with the ride that she got there, and she ran a lot better than it looks. Um, we'll see if she can pull the right trip here and, and fire fresh off the layoff. She has won fresh before, and speaking of winning fresh, how about the number two, Dreaming of Drew, Patrick Husbands, Barb Minchel, 4-1 to one on the morning line. This horse missed all of 2021. She was a very good uh, two-year-old back in 2020. Layoff was no issue for her in the Long Branch State. Earlier this Woodbine meet going five and a half furlongs. She showed good speed from the start, and she really had to fight. A great training job to get her ready off the long layoff. Yeah, definitely. She could have lost this race, Dan. This horse coming up to her outside um, with all the momentum here and actually is going to get ahead in front of Dreaming of Drew in the late stages. Um, and that horse had already had a race, too. This horse, That horse was second off the layoff, but Dreaming of, Dreaming of Drew is going to fight back and prevail. And a nice step forward, Dan, for a horse who missed the entire uh, her entire three-year-old campaign, uh, a 90 off that long layoff, good performance. Rafael Hernandez named to ride the number three, Dirty Dangle, who might have a bit of an advantage because she has two starts already in 2022, including this victory and an allowance event last time out going five-eighths of a mile. And she was able to get close to a moderate pace for the five-eighths of a mile distance. She was ridden very confidently turning into the stretch. And she scored, I thought, with something to spare and a respectable buyer. It looks like this filly is coming into her own. The question is, is she good enough to tackle stakes horses right now? Right, it, it, exactly. She's taken a pretty significant step up in class. She won easily there. The horse that was second to her, Millennium Force, is also back in here, but she's the longest shot on the board. Um, this is a, a much tougher race. And it's also, you know, I think the distance is also a fair question, Dan. She's won three times, all at five furlongs. Artie's Princess, the number four, won the Best Arabian, a graded stakes race going seven-eighths of a mile in her final start of 2020. She got the winter off, as to be expected. She came back in last year's whimsical. She pushed the pace three wide. She tired. Maybe she needed the race. The problem is she's been gone since then. And this is a very, very long layoff, especially with a fast pace. But this is a talented horse when she's right. And I, it appears that Safi Joseph, her new trainer, supplemented her to this race. 
Yeah, I mean, she was just really good um, uh, earlier on in her career. All of those races uh, throughout 2019 and 2020, she ran well in all of them, Dan. Um, and then for whatever reason, you know, you just feel like in the whimsical, something must have went wrong for her to make only that one star and then just disappear after tiring the way that she did. Um, you just feel like something went wrong in that race. And if she comes back now and she's healthy and ready to go off the layoff, she's going to be a handful in here. Luis Contreras named on the number five boardroom. And if boardroom comes back off of a long layoff, the same boardroom that we saw last year, I think there's a chance she's going to be one of the top Philly and Mare sprinters on the tapita in Canada this year. Let's watch boardroom's victory in the Seaway last time out, going seven eighths of a mile. Uh, there was not a lot of pace going on in this race. She swung to the far outside, turning for home, and she is on her way to beat two next out winners. This is a very visually impressive performance. It's just... A shame that Josie Carroll's had a whale of a time getting her to the races. Yeah, it really is. I mean, she just absolutely cruised in that seaway, um, swept up on that field um, on her own power, won very easily. I mean, it was a huge step forward for her, too. Her prior race, the Whimsical, that was also a good performance um, off of a fast pace, but she worked really hard to win that day. Um, not the case in the seaway last time. It'll be interesting. She's, she's won well off the layoff as a first-time starter and then last year as well, Dan. So we know we know she can fire fresh. I wonder if the six-hour secret agent who we saw finishing a game second to dream, a game third to dreaming of Drew last time, I needed the race. She's run well second off the layoff in the past, and she has some races. Uh, she is a graded stakes winner in Canada. She won the Hendry going six and a half, uh, three back, and she'll be a good price in this spot. I think she's going to be a good price. I think she could fall into the right trip in this race as well if some of these other horses go forward and use their speed. Um, that most recent start, Dan, you know, it was off the layoff. It was also, I think, maybe just a little too short for her. But I'll tell you what, she was holding her position right to the wire there. Those two horses that, that ran one, two, they were not getting away from her at the end. So I thought that was a good performance. She was beaten by boardroom um, three times already in her career, but she's made it close with that horse a couple of times. 20 to 1 on the number 7 Millennium Force. Antonio Gallardo takes the mount. This is a horse that would really benefit from a fast pace, but she needs a buyer boost. We saw her finishing second as the favorite behind Dirty Dangle last time out. Maybe she gets the right setup. I think she not only needs the right setup, but maybe one or two of these to stub their toes a bit. Yeah, she's going to want a couple of these horses to really need a race off the layoff because based on what she's done so far, she's probably just in a little too tough here. Please click on the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel. Triple Crown season is here. Get all the latest videos from DRF TV. Top pick time for the feature at Woodbine on Sunday. Our secret agent for Mike. I think this horse is going to work out a really nice trip. Stalking outside in the clear. And like you, that last distance might have been too sharp for you. I feel that way. Yeah, that's how I'm looking at her, too. I think she's just going to be a fair price in this race, Dan, and she's not in over her head. She might need, you know, a couple of breaks here, but she catches the, the two horses that I think are the two to beat, the four and the five. She gets them both off of layoffs here. Long layoff for Artie's Princess. I want to see her run and gun out of the gate in this spot and try to make the lead and take them all the way. I don't like her morning line. I need her to drift. 6542 for Mike, 4526 for me. It is the feature race at Woodbine, the whimsical on Sunday. Good luck.